Hello, I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and thank you for joining me today. <clears throat> uh, earlier in this week, and in the previous week, I was talking about our being righteous in Christ. We looked at a number of verses about that righteousness, and I want to revisit uh, an idea that we looked at quite a long time ago, but that is tied directly to this idea of righteousness. <clears throat> and the case is built for this in the book of Romans. Uh, in fact, some people refer to the book of Romans uh, as uh, a declaration or a treatise on righteousness, divine righteousness, uh, contrast to human righteousness. Um, and it does certainly, that idea certainly plays a, a major role in the whole point that Paul is driving at in Romans. And his point in Romans uh, that he states at the beginning of the book, and he states it again at the end of the book, is to see believers become stable or firm. And the number one reason that believers are not stable or, or firm is because we focus on our conduct alone. And if you are honest with yourself, you realize that you fail. And you fail probably a lot. In fact, I sometimes I think that's one of the great secrets of uh, Christianity, real Christianity. Nobody ever wants to ever admit it. But we fail a lot, and fail is kind of it's code word for sin. Not everything we do is sin, but people sin way more than we would ever want to admit. Because <clears throat> we like to think that everything's getting better. But in reality, uh, during this life, we have that God's made it possible for us to not sin, to actually have victory or freedom with regard to sin. But that comes as we learn to focus on who God sees who we are in Christ. And just run through some verses here very quickly, just to remind us of these. This is actually a verse, this has been written for the sake of believers, but I share this a lot when I share the gospel with people. But to the one who does not work, because you run into people all the time that think that they have to work for their salvation, but believes on him who declares those who are trying really hard, no, declares righteous the ungodly or declares the ungodly to be righteous. His faith is credited or counted to him for righteousness. So God looks at that act of faith, not works, says that's righteousness. He then says in Romans 5.1, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous, and this has been declared righteous, is, uh, and I can't get this to come up here for you in the middle, but it's a perfect tense, meaning we were declared righteous with the result that it remains true, and that by faith. And so as a result, we have peace facing God, but it's by faith that we've been declared righteous. Romans 5, 9, much more than since we have been declared righteous by his blood. Now, why does he say now by his blood? Well, now it's looking at the God side of it. God's the one that declares us righteous. Our part is simply believing that, but part of what Jesus Christ did was that he died, and he didn't just die any kind of a death. The emphasis is by his blood is that it was a death that was violent, and his violent death is actually secured for us righteousness. So we've been declared righteous by his blood. Then we come to Romans chapter 6, verse 7, and I'm going to continue looking at it in this text, the, the HCSB. Um, the problem with this is, is almost every English Bible we have says since a person has died is freed from sin's claims. They have freed from sin's claims. And they keep translating this word freed. And I want you to just go back up here and see this word declared righteous is this verb dikaio. We have the same verb here, but they translate it freed. Uh, I, I want to switch over here. It, it's not going to change the meaning, but I want to put this side by side. For someone who has died has been freed, and there we can see in the Greek text, uh, it is our word dikaio, and it's a perfect tense, meaning it was settled in the past or the result that it is true. But it's not just from sin. I think the HCSB says from sin's claim, but it's literally from the sin nature. And this apo is away from, God separated us away from the, our sin nature in who we are in Christ. Down here in this earth, I still have a sin nature. But in Christ, I'm separated from my sin nature and separated from it. God says, I am declared righteous as the result that it remains true. And it was based on what Jesus Christ did. All I did was believe that promise. It's true of me. Perfect, perfect tense, settled, it's done. 
I'm declared righteous, and I'm separated away from sin, from the sin nature. And that brings us to then to this last verse, which we have looked at before. And just a second here. Hopefully this is, there it is. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I still remember very early on in my Christian life, I was probably about 20 years old. I'm sure I had heard this verse before then. I'm sure I had heard this and had it taught to me. But it wasn't until then that this really struck me as I was learning who I was in Christ for the very first time in my Christian life that I realized I'm not condemned because I'm in Christ. My the condemnation is not based on my conduct. It's based on who I am in Christ. I have to come back to that because when I sin, I want to beat myself up. I don't know about you, but when you sin, when we fail in whatever sense that is, whether it's outright sin or whether we just we know that we're not really doing really what God wants for us to do and we can beat ourselves up over that but we can come back to this and say hey I'm not condemned in Christ and come back to who God says we are in Christ and say I'm not condemned and I'm not condemned because God's declared me righteous in Christ it's that word it's it's the idea of a judge standing there and lowering the gavel saying not guilty. And it's not just not guilty, but righteous in Christ because of who Christ is, not because of who I am, but who I am in Christ. And that's true of you if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. If you have not believed in Jesus Christ, you could do that right now, wherever you are. You just need to recognize as a sinner that Christ came into the world to die for your sins. He didn't have any sins. But you as a sinner, Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day so that you could have life. And he was seen by many people after it. It wasn't just a mystical resurrection. And if you believe that, you would be righteous. You would be forgiven if you'd believe that. You'd be righteous right now, just like that. God would count you righteous for all time and eternity in Christ. I encourage you to think through this today. Because if you're like me, probably in the last few days have had some failures, have had some of the areas that were frustrating to you. And like me, you need to remind yourself, wait a second, I'm righteous in Christ. And because I'm righteous in him, I'm not condemned. And if you put that into your thinking, then you'll have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to click down below, like, maybe even subscribe uh, share this perhaps with other believers that would benefit from being reminded that we are righteous in Christ and not condemned. Thank you again.